And then just started recording the session. Um, the question that we're going to do together is time spent on YouTube has gone down by 20% day over day. And what would you do? Right. Um, so now here's the link to that question. So um, let's figure out um, how we're going to do this. And the first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to share uh, my screen with you all. People gave me the feedback last time uh, that it was a good idea. So we're going to keep trying it. Um, please let me know if you prefer kind of the old way of just like seeing our faces. Um, we can always revert back to it as well. All right. So um, I can see that Mark has raised his hand. Mark, go ahead. What would you like to share? Uh, I have a clarifying question. Uh, uh, wh when it's exactly when it started. So it's gradually drops by 20%. When it started. Okay, that's a very good question. So, um, so the first question you're asking is when did when did the drop in the YouTube uh, time spent start, right? right? So let's say that uh, we're looking at um, daily average, right? 30 day average, uh, comparing it to, let's say we're comparing it to the year before, right? So I'm looking at, for example, but the 30 day average now is, um, and I'm comparing it to the year before, I'm seeing that there's like a kind of a 20% drop um, um, day over day on average. Um, and to be honest, the term uh, day over day is kind of vague because it could mean that it just means one day, but let's say for the sake of the argument, I'm gonna say it's like 30 day average, right? It's gone down. Um, so that's a very good clarification question. Um, Eschan, go ahead. Yeah, I mean, similarly, I was going to ask what was meant by day over day. Does that mean from one day to the next, there's been a 20% drop? And has it maintained that 20% drop um, ongoing from that point? Got it. So um, I would say that uh, we currently don't know where that drop um, came from. Um, whether or not it was consistent or not, but we can always look at data. Right now, what we know is that when we look at the data today, compared to a year ago, like 30 days drop is kind of obvious. So I mean, so so you're looking at it, basically you're looking at the past 30 days, um, but compared to last year. Compared to last year, exactly. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, could I ask um, uh, um, some other clarifying questions? Sure, yeah. Um, so I just wanted to understand what is meant by time spent. Is that on the content creator side or on the content consumer side? And do we have any more information about um, who that pertains to, whether it's um, paid subscribers or free users? So um, I want to say that the, this is a really good question. And the reason it's really good is because in many cases, especially with problem solving questions, we are struggling to um, really understand what the problem is by um, not asking sufficient clarification questions on the definition of um, the terminologies, the metrics, and all those things. So this is a really good example um, of a situation where um, you're asking a really important clarification. You're saying, what do we mean by my kind of time spent on YouTube? Who are we referring to? Um, you can actually expand this question a little bit further and say, um, are we referring to, for example, average time spent? Um, or are we referring to the total time spent, right? So these are all like very, very good questions that um, you can really, um, you know, help, uh, you can ask to get some like clarification. So let's say that we're referring to the consumer, consumer side, right? So I'm just gonna write um, consumer side, consumer time spent on YouTube, right? Um, and the other thing that we can also say is that we're referring by, we're referring to, uh, to total time, uh, time spent on YouTube, right? 
So this is what we need. Okay, cool. So um, I can see that uh, sub H, your hand is up, and then Lel, and then Mark. Um, so go ahead, sub H. Did I pronounce you right? Is the chain? Yeah, that's right. Is the chain specific to any platform, such as the website versus iOS versus Android? Got it. So let's say that the change is uh, consistent all across. Um, we're saying basically just drop everywhere. Okay. Oh yeah, cool. So, um, all right, Lel? Yeah, I would like to ask if this is like a specific geographical um, or is it across the globe? Got it. Is, this, is there some sort of a geographical uh, or global impact? Um, no, we see it. Uh, we see this at an aggregated level, um, and uh, we don't think that this is like you know specifically like related to a particular geographical location. So uh, we don't think it's uh, yeah, it's specific to a particular location. Got it. And yeah. then like total time spent. Can we, um, do we have any insight on like daily active users uh, or uh, or let's say monthly active users? Is there like a decrease of monthly active users here? Yeah, that's a really good question. Um, and I think kind of you're, you're getting into is that um, the total time spent is really coming from um, average time spent multiplied by you know, number, number of, of users, users right? Users. So you're trying to kind of figure out where it is. And I really like this question because uh, you're kind of thinking about it in a very analytical way. You're kind of trying to figure out, okay, which particular path I need to go further. Um, so let's say that uh, we're seeing that on the total, so your question was, have we seen a drop um, in, uh, in total number of users? Um, or number of active users, and the answer is no. Uh, we're not seeing any uh, decrease in like number of um, active users, right? Uh, um, so. What about specifically monthly active users? Yeah, so uh, we're not seeing any drop there either. Okay, all right, cool, yeah, thank we're you. Not seeing any yeah, okay. uh, very good question. Um, so next is Mark. So, um... Any another metric changed at the same time? So I think you want to be a lot more specific than that. Because let's say, uh, yeah. let's say uh, we have like uh, increased, um, we have more visitors or we have like less, um, less, um, less engagement from the users. Or uh, something is changing. Like so, there is there's anything uh, like uh, any any other metric changed. Um. So I think um, you know, when the total number of active, when the total time spent have gone down, right? You're definitely gonna see um, a bunch of other metrics being impacted, right? Like you're gonna see a bunch of other metrics impacted. Uh, potentially, the way I would have thought about it is that um, kind of thinking about what Lel asked, right? Um, okay, if we know that this is how I would have positioned it, right? I would have said um, it looks like the you know time spent has really um, gone down because um, the average time spent per user has gone down, right? Mm -hmm. Because it looks like the total number of monthly active users are the same. So if that's the case then um, there are different types of users um, and there's this different type of video content. Um, I'm curious to know if we're seeing um, a significant drop um, in some areas uh, more than the other, right? Like for example, are we seeing this drop more um, in longer videos versus shorter videos? Like here, you're kind of being a lot more specific um, and you're asking for more um, kind of, you know, um, direct answers. And at the same time, showing your, um, you know, ability to kind of like continue working down the path until you arrive at a very specific answer. So um, just keep that in mind. I want to go to the next person. I can see the next person whose hand came up that hasn't spoken yet. Um, 
I believe it's Shivanki, if I'm not mistaken. For some reason, when I share screens, I can't see people's names. It's so weird. Um, anyways, I think it's Shivanki, if I'm not mistaken. Uh, Shivanki, we'd love to hear your thoughts. Uh, yeah, so I have one clarifying question. Is the decline that we are seeing over this, uh, that we've calculated the 30-day average, is it uh, gradual or we suddenly saw it over a short period of time? Got it. So let's say that uh, it's graduate um, and we're seeing that this number is kind of slowly going down, that this number is going down, right? So when we're okay. looking at um, the past, you know, few months or so, um, we're seeing this number slowly going down. So um, that's a very good question. Um, and I think this is going to start kind of giving us some hints, right? Like, you know, it looks like uh, the time spent per user on YouTube um, has gone down, right? Um, so uh, let's think a little bit more. Um, I'm trying to see who else hasn't spoken yet to, to, to raise their hands. Niraj, go ahead. We'd love to hear your thoughts. Sure. Uh, so first of all, uh, I want to know if there is a competitor in the market in the same video streaming space, which has came, come up in last one year, uh, which might be causing a decline in our viewership. Uh, that is my first question. Um, so, I mean, I think uh, we already know the answer to that, right? So um, what I mean by that is, we already know that YouTube is in fierce competition on video with Facebook, Facebook videos. Then YouTube is in heavy competition, um, you know, with users, let's say on um, Netflix, like subscription-based services, right? Subscription-based video streaming services. Um, YouTube okay. is in fierce competition with TikTok. So we kind of have to like be a lot more specific um, than, than, you know, like saying, are there competitors? Of course they're competitors, right? Um, you want to kind of say that here's how I would have positioned right. it, right? To kind of share with you like how I would have approached it. I would say, um, I think the, the video market is very competitive, right? Um, there, there are a lot of players and it looks like the time spent on YouTube has gone down. Um, I'm curious to know if we see this trend across the industry in the sense that people are spending less time on video um, or not. Or another way, the answer, let's say it says, no, it's gone down. Okay, great. In that case, what it means is that um, competitors have started eating some of YouTube's launch. So my question would be, are we seeing any particular competitor gaining significant market share over YouTube over the past year, because then what it means is that they are the ones that are the source of like us kind of bleeding um, user engagement, right? Whereas if it's the other case where all competitors are gaining market share compared to YouTube in different segments, it means that we probably did something internal, right? Um, that basically kind of um, made the cost, made our users go away and start considering other alternatives to consuming video. So you want right. to be very strategic with how you ask that question uh, because it's mm -hmm. going to give you a lot of kind of you know directions um, in terms of uh, you know how the competitors are potentially um, impacting the business. So I'm going to answer your question and say uh, first of all, let's say that um, all the competitors are eating our lunch, right? Um, so okay. um, that kind of gives us an idea, and and yes, like it was gradual as well. So um, hopefully that that helps. So um, the the question was, I'm going to say, was there a particular you know competitor that uh, took over you know most of our market share? No, the answer is no. Uh, everyone did. Every competitor uh, took a piece, right? So well, this is kind of going to give us more guidance. Um, did you find it helpful? Do you see, do you see where I'm coming from? Yeah, like kind of, yes, yeah? totally. Okay. Yeah, totally. yeah. The, cool. There's a follow-up question, if I may. Uh, sure. So uh, actually, Mark has already talked about it, uh, but the kind of content which we are seeing on YouTube. 
so uh, it's regarding the creators and the kind of content they create for example there there is a kids uh, section where like the not section but there are videos related to kids there are videos related to gaming and there are videos uh, related to songs and you know uh, science creators etc uh, have we seen a dip in a particular kind of category of those videos got it so have we seen a dip um in a genre right is that is that what you right. mean exactly uh, no yeah. we have, we have seen it across we've seen everywhere right we've seen okay. it in all in all genre right okay. so that's a good question um okay i want to go to the next person who hasn't spoken yet apurva great to have you back again we'd love to hear your thoughts yeah i'm <laughs> glad to be back as well so i would ask if there is any type of breakup of the time spent on youtube i understand it is time spent by customers sorry by sorry and uh, just pardon me by consumers yeah. but uh, um, is there a breakup and the reason i'm asking that is that will dis- that will impact the follow up questions i would want to know for instance a consumer can spend you know 20 minutes trying to find the right video or can spend just 5 minutes trying to find the right video and like you know that and spend more time viewing the video but the overall time spent might decline however the user experience has improved and that could be impacted by some changes we have done to our recommendation algorithm etc so and so forth so that is why i was asking do we have a break up of like the what time is spent on just surfing versus viewing videos Got it. So, um, correct me if I'm wrong. Your question is: Are we seeing this drop um, more significantly impacting s- certain types of videos when you think about videos in the spectrum of time of the video? Is that is that what you're kind of getting at? You're trying to figure out if it's like the short videos that are impacted more than the long videos than the um, actually. You know, i think i'm more trying to understand is the time that we are seeing dropping because of um you know our recommendation algorithm has improved but itself probably in when it comes to viewing videos like the time people spend on just viewing videos yeah searching actually exactly that's the right word so searching versus viewing if we can get that break up and if we know that you know what what we are seeing is really just driven by that people now don't need to spend that much time searching for videos then it's actually a good thing but we don't know where, what is really impacting this total time spent decline got it got it got it so let me kind of be a little bit um difficult here and i don't mean to um do it to put you on the spot but i kind of want to say um you want to be very clear with like your ask of me from a metrics perspective like do you want to like kind of say what metric you want me to look into for you like you know what i mean like you sh- you think of me as like a data scientist and you say bijan i want you to tell me um are we seeing this impact um are we seeing this change in this particular metric or you you know what i mean like you want to frame your question very clearly in a way that i can say okay I'm going to put this as an input into the machine and then the machine is going to give me now. So what would be the metric that you would like to see? I would it's like It's not a bad see. question by the way. I think it's a very good question. Um it's a very good question but I just I'm just asking it because I think um it's very important for you um depending on how you position it. No, totally totally. I think yeah, I I think definitely i could be much much clearer in the way i'm approaching this question so i think if i i would want to know if the time spent searching for videos has it have we seen any decline or what are what's happening to that metric versus time spent viewing videos so um time spent viewing videos versus what was the other one searching for videos on the searching for videos um so maybe one way you could kind of say this is like um and i'm saying this because like you can kind of explain why you think this metric is relevant right um you could say do we th- do i i think um 
if there is a drop in the number of searches, right, um, it's an indication that people are finding what they want much faster, right? Um, and maybe that's why they're spending less time. Um, in order for me to know whether or not that's the case, I want to look at um, the number of searches done on YouTube, right? Has that number of searches Got gone? And like, what's actually more important for me is to know um, if the number of searches divided by number of unique intents have changed significantly. Because YouTube usually knows what the intent is, right? Um, they can see from a few searches, like they're all kind of the part of the same thing until the user finds it. Because that's gonna tell me that they're finding what they want much faster, right? So you're kind of being like a lot more specific. Um, and then the answer to that question is that, no, the ratio of like, you know, all the searches divided by um, unique intents has not really changed, uh, which probably means that from a searching perspective, um, you know, this didn't really, um, you know, cause that kind of an impact because people are finding what they want much faster. Um, that part hasn't really changed. You see where I'm coming from, right? Like yeah. when you say like, um, you want to like really clarify, um, you know, why you're looking at this metric. And I think you, what I liked about your approach is, um, and this is something that we should kind of like dig a little bit more into in the next 30 minutes, is you're, you're starting to think about the user experience, right? You're saying, okay, um, there are two types of users that go to YouTube. Um, there are the ones that look at a uh, homepage and they're the ones that are doing search. Um, I'm gonna assume uh, I have this one hypothesis that uh, people are spending less time because they're finding what they want uh, much faster. And one way for me to see that is that the number of um, you know, successful searches um, have gone up or the number of um, searches around a particular topic uh, per intent uh, has gone down, which means that the users are arriving at a so, so are we seeing a change? And then the answer is no. Um, so then we can continue. Okay. Um, sorry for going too long a little bit on this. Um, next person, Lel, I'd love to hear from your thoughts. Um, I, can I have a like little comment on uh, what uh, Ap Apurva was saying earlier? I think, um, oh. yeah, so I think she was trying to define the problem like time what does time mean here is it like if you have this app open versus um time actually watching videos um so if that makes sense in that way yeah i see what you yeah. mean okay time uh -huh. spent um is this on on videos or like on the app right right or, right right or all other activities um, so I think uh, we can we can assume that we're really referring to time spent on watching the videos, um, which really represent like you know let's say for the sake of the argument, uh, yeah. ninety five percent of activities on YouTube, right? Yeah. Okay. Um, so yeah, that I think sense. we can we can make that assumption. But thanks so much for clarifying. Uh, yeah. So, um, what I would ask for a clarified question in that sense uh, in that case would be. Um, are we seeing decline in um, average number of video watch, like average numbers of video watch per user? So is this like, because right now we see a decrease in average time per user um, and that's per, per month. And so I wanted to know, are we seeing decline in average number of videos? So if that number decreases, um, then the average time per video per user is decreased. Uh, so if that number doesn't change, then it means that the, num uh, the average time per user per video is decreasing. Yeah, so okay. I think um, the answer to your question is yes, we are seeing a decline in um, average number of videos watched per user. Um, and is that 20%? What's that? And, and is that 20%? Like the um, decrease? Yeah, we can say it's close to 20%, yeah. Okay, cool, cool, yeah. So people yeah. are I mean, watching less. Like, I mean, it, it could be, it could be, you know, maybe maybe less because um, what, what it means is that the, 
people are watching less videos, right? Um, and sometimes it means like less number of videos, but sometimes it means that they're also spending less time, um, you know, watching a video or completing a video, right? I think the outcome is at the end of the day, the average time spent on all the videos that a user is watching is like 20% less. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Okay, cool. And um, if I may ask another sure. one. <laughs> yeah, yeah, of course. So are we seeing um, the service being stable? Like, do we have any down times on the servers or, um, or like malfunctioning? Um, mal um, yeah, the things? service has been pretty stable. And um, okay. yeah, the service has been stable. Yeah. Okay. yeah. All right, that's all my question. Thank you. Okay, yeah, no worries. Okay, so who's next? Who hasn't gone for a while? I think um, S Chan, then Mark, then Sam. Um, um, I don't care about that order. Go ahead, S Chan. Okay, so um, uh, basically um, piggybacking off this, the, um, the, the sort of angle that we're on, which is at this point, I would say that we can hypothesize that there is an engagement issue here okay um, that's great and to further back that up though i would want to ask um because you know it, it could be on um as a, as a function of uh the content which um i know we touched on before when we talked about categories um but we didn't go further into that so i would want to know as well is has there been a, a drop in completions of watching video in our, in others in other words you know have when people are engaged they watch a video all the way through um and then maybe go on to another one but has there been has there been like a number of non uh, um, an increase in non-completions um and on the content side um what is the average length of video? Have there been any changes on that? Are we seeing more short form video on the platform? Got it. So I'm just gonna write down the questions. The first one was, has there been a drop in percentage of videos being completed, right? Uh, and then the other, what was the second question? Um, on on the the content side to go, I know yeah. we covered like um, vertices, right? But I, I wanted to ask you, has the average length of video changed? Uh, has the average uh, length of a produced video, right? That's what you mean. Yes. Right? And like, you know, I would, so the first answer question is like, has there been a drop uh, in percentage of videos being completed? Um, this is a very good question. And the answer is yes, there has been a drop, right? Um, so this is kind of like uh, helping us like get a path. And then the other question is like, has there been a change in the average length of the video produced? And I would say you just want to make sure how you ask this question. I, because of all the historical videos that are on the platform, right? Mm -hmm. um, you might want to say, do we see a decrease um, in time of newly produced videos? Right. Okay. That's that's what you really mean, right? Yeah. 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 And sorry to to um, sure. add one more um, question here, which relates to engagement. Are any other engagement metrics um, uh, suffering, such as um, likes per per user, shares per user? Uh, okay. So. Um... I will, I will add that question. First, has the length of new video videos changed? The answer is no. Uh, and then the other question being, has we, have we seen um, a change in number of uh, engagement metrics, right? And what I mean by that is like really reaction metrics, right? That's right. what you mean, right? Yes. Um, and the answer is yes, right? Um, but I would potentially argue that um, this is, this might not be a causation relationship. This might be a correlation, right? Mm -hmm. um, so you might want to be careful 
I, because I think you're in the right path, especially with the question of, um, has there been a drop in percentage of videos being completed, right? Um, and when we think about it from a PM, we're like, okay, great. So now let's think about uh, what happens when a video gets uh, in the user journey of a video, right? Um, being watched, right? Um, these are all the things we're gonna to try to figure out what, what could be a cause of it, right? Um, so that would be kind of like the one thing I would say is to kind of keep in mind uh, because sometimes, you know, we think there are certain things are causation and in reality, there's just correlation. Yeah. I've learned that in a hard way <laughs> in my career. So just like kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay, cool. And can all I right. ask one more thing then? Sure. Uh, just going, so some of the things that for YouTube as a video platform, um, one of its big strengths is um, its user experience um and it's algorithms um yeah. that's really what keeps people on the platform and keeps them watching more videos so you've said that the decline has been um gradual um but as we know um when when changes are made to a platform um such as in the user experience you don't you don't see sudden drops because obviously people come visit the platform at different times so is there a particular point of time that we can car that, that we we introduced any kind of change to the user experience or to the platform that we can correlate this drop to um so I'm trying to think like how to answer this question without, um, you know, making it too easy for you to guess, um, you know, what I have in my mind. And the reason I'm trying to do this is because in reality, right, um, you wouldn't ask that question from a data scientist, right? Because if they already had that answer, um, your life, your job would be so much easier. The thing is you're trying to diagnose what the issue is. Right. Um, so saying, you know, do we do we see a gradual drop starting after making a major change? We're kind of like, you know, kind of almost asking for the answer. You know what I mean? Um, whereas in reality, um, you could you could ask ask it for two parts, right? Like first say, um, do we see a time that the graduate happened? Yes. Um, let's say we can see that um, you know the engagement peaked in um February of this year right and then um the next question would be um since February of this year um you know what changes have we made um in the user experience of the YouTube video right mm -hmm. um and then you're kind of trying to kind of get into that um yeah so just like one thing but I think overall it's a good question and I think you're kind of guiding us in the right path of like really um, digging more into the user experience of watching a video. Um, you're kind of identifying that, okay, it seems like we have an idea of like what the issue is, like it's something that's happening um, in the experience of watching a video. It seems like there's a drop. Um, this drop uh, has caused like maybe people watching like less next videos as well. Um, and the result of it is like people are spending less time on the site as well. So I'm um, trying to figure out like, you know, what was the change? So um, I think that's a good way of um, going about it. So the first answer is like, when, when did the change start? When did, when do we see the drop? So let's say we see it um, starting February, right? Um, and then let's see if we can keep it a little bit uh, contained to be kind of metrics driven. Uh, before I say what the change was, um, because we're kind of getting close to the answer. I think there are a couple other questions that we can ask from a metrics perspective um, around the user experience that helps us really identify what the issue is uh, by just like looking at uh, metrics, right? Um, and it's kind of hard sometimes to do that, but I think it's a good exercise. Uh, who goes next? I think I said Mark would be the next person. Mark, go ahead. Um... 
you know, before we go in deep in the rabbit's hole, there are some questions I would just would like, would love to clarify. Um, because there's, if there is any uh, major events happening outside of the company, because we are looking inside of the company and inside of there's like of the user experience and we should go deeper. Uh, but at the same time, uh, maybe uh, something happened uh, outside of the company. Let's say some major event like war, um, hurricane, any catastrophe, anything like that. And another thing, maybe um, something like uh, the major competitor product launch or a uh, new competitor on the, on the market. So I would definitely... Um, jump in those metrics and met, uh, those kind of events and investigate those kind of events before going deeper into rabbit hole. Got it, got it. So um, thanks so much for sharing that. So the answer to both of those questions, no major events, no competitor. But okay. I just want to kind of, I just want to take a step back and say, um, we have a really important insight at this moment, right? That very important insight is the fact that percentage of people that complete a video, right? The percentage of videos being completed has gone down, right? Um, the, the percentage of videos that are being completed that has gone down. So I would think the next thing that I wanna know, right? Are what, like, you know, related to that. Like we wanna know what well, do I cause Right, exactly. Like what, what caused the drop? Like what are the things from a user experience standpoint that makes people not finishing the video, right? So um, I want to actually just ask the next person that's going to talk, um, Saab, I would love to hear your thoughts. What are the things that make people not want to watch the video? I, I, I have basically a two-parted, uh, two-part answer to that. Um, okay. One is, is there, this could be, um, some technological problems such as a new update that continuously caused the app to crash on yeah. uh, on on phones or it could also be um any change in how we calculate total minutes of video watched say <clears throat> do we watch, do we calculate the actual video user wants to see plus the advertisement and now we are not counting the advertisement so you know how we count, how we track those metrics? Like, did we change any of the methodology or business rules? Got it. Okay. So we came up with two reasons. Um, I would love to hear more. Um, I think we think about the user experience. We can think about a few, right? Um, maybe Niraj, you want to go next? What, what are other things could cause that people yeah. not want to complete a video? So one of them, uh, what I was thinking of the recommendation engine. Uh, what okay. kind of videos people are recommended after they watch a video, not just when they land on the platform, but after they watch one video, what is the next recommendation? If we have made some changes in those uh, algorithms. Uh, okay. So, um, yeah. Right. Um, and then let's let's think about one more. What could be ads? I mean, I feel ads. like the well, well, engines. Well, yeah. Right. Perfect. Ads. Right, so ads could be another reason. Um, and I think it's pretty easy for us to quickly say, okay, between these, right, uh, we can think about metrics that tell us um, whether or not we see a major change here, right? And um, that hopefully gets us a little bit closer. Um, so let's say that, um, let's start with like these four that we got here. Uh, we'd love to hear how do we actually use metrics to figure out um, whether or not, you know, these, uh, you know, these things that exist as part of the user experience, especially the last two, right, have an impact. Uh, recommendation engine, uh, not making, uh, not make, not recommending good videos. Um, so, you know, I think um, this is an interesting one because one could argue that um, this wouldn't necessarily impact completion rates, right? Um, it'll impact number of videos. Right. Um, so just like kind of some push for thought there. Um, uh, please let me know if you disagree with that. Love to hear. I think it might, especially okay. if there are those kinds of videos that just want to grab your attention. Right. Yeah. So the user would like click on it, like the clickbait type of video. Yeah. 
Got it. Um, depending on the type of data. Okay, sure. Um, okay, what what else? Uh, what other metrics uh, can you think about here? Um, you know, I to think figure out. Yeah, go ahead. For the recommendation piece itself, if we are really trying to pin down a specific metric, I would like to pin down like uh, how many, uh, what percentage of users are uh, clicking the recommended videos that we show on the panel, like the top two or something like that. And has that metric declined over time, especially after we have made any changes to the platform or algorithm? So let's just say for the sake of the argument, um, only 10% of people click on the recommended videos, right? Um, so. And that has been know. constant throughout yeah. this. Yeah. And to be honest, if this number goes up or down, I don't know if it's gonna tell you whether or not that drop um, necessarily is being caused by it because. The reason um, I was thinking about yeah. that, that it might impact the number of videos watched. Fair enough, fair enough, okay. All right, so um, yeah, let's say that number has been consistent. Um, what other things that we can ask around here? I think, you know, kind of like helping a little bit to kind of move quickly, technological problem, because we know that the drop is in all platforms, right? Um, we know that uh, this is not, uh, you know, device dependent, right? And device dependent issues usually, um, you know, to get addressed pretty quickly. Um, okay, so what else can we, what else um, can we think so, about? Go ahead. Sorry, Aprova. can I just ask Bijan, does technological question? problem, yeah, does that encompass design changes as well? Like, does, like from the UX perspective, because that's, uh, if, if YouTube has rolled out um, a, a different layout, look and feel or a different user experience, that would it have a global impact? Yeah. Yeah, so let's say that we haven't really made any major changes on the UX. Okay. Yeah. So for, from the um, from the ad side, I would like to um, drill down between free and premium users and the watch time on on both because premium users don't see ads. That's a really really good way of going about it. Honestly, I think this is kind of like how you should think about it. Um, and the reason I think it's a really good way is because um, you're not making an assumption on the causation versus correlation relationship that we were discussing about uh, discussing earlier. You're just trying to really compare the ads people versus the premium people and really see if that difference is there. So that's a really good question. And let's say that uh, premium users didn't experience a drop and uh, our free users experience drop. So then I would like to do some cohort analysis. Okay. Because um, we could have got uh, a bunch of bad traffic from the free users and we could be dealing with a retention issue. Okay, so um, what would you like to, you know, what what metric would you like to look at or uh, what would you like me to kind of like do as the next step um i think it's it's comparing comparing watch times for cohorts starting from um from you know before february and after and looking at it for free users before february and after to narrow down whether it is really you know it, it can be related to ads got it so um that's a really good point and i and i like how you're going about it from a cohort analysis perspective uh, rather than just like kind of simply saying uh, let's look at um i don't know like number of ads presented right because you're really trying to kind of dig deeper um, into this and figure out if there's like some sort of a causation relationship uh, is that is that what you're thinking was? Am I, exactly. am I kind of communicating exactly. it right? Yeah. yeah. Okay. Perfect. Um, so let's uh, let's say yes. The answer is um, yeah. We do the cohort analysis, and we do see that um, we the more ads uh, we've been presenting, right? Um, the the higher the kind of uh, the lower the completion rate is, right? And uh, we're seeing this. 
We're seeing this especially in February because we decided that um, given the financial situation, uh, we need to increase our revenue um, from ads on YouTube. So um, that's that's kind of like, let's say the, um, the result of the analysis. So what do we do next? We'd like to look at ad revenue to see <laughs> if this has been a successful thing. If if adding more ads, ha but having less completion has netted us more revenue anyway. Okay, sounds good. And this is kind of like where um, really dependent on how much time you have um, in the interview, uh, you know, you can take different approaches, right? Like one path is you kind of dig deeper and say, okay, it looks like uh, this is really caused by um, a business decision that we made to decided to show more ads, right? Um, I can, now I wanna figure out if it's if it's worth the decision, right? Is this the right trade-off? Um, another way is that you can kind of um, spend a, maybe a couple minutes that you have to kind of explain how you're going to go about um, evaluating basically this trade-off question, right? Um, should we show more ads at the cost of like less engagement, right? Or should we um, kind of revert back to uh, where we were before? Um, we'd love to hear somebody really kind of describing, um, you know, what we should do here, like during the interview, let's say you've got like kind of one or two minutes and you're just trying to kind of briefly describe um, what we should do next. Um, we'd love to have somebody that kind of put that into some sort of a framework, quick structure, like share, uh, what they would do as a PM uh, in terms of next steps. Um, I'll go to Niraj first, um, and then after that, we'd love to hear S. Chan. Uh, okay, Lel, raise your hand. We'll go to Lel afterwards, and then S. Chan as well. Uh, okay, go ahead, Niraj. Yeah, uh, I had just one more question uh, about this number of ads. Are we seeing a pattern in the positioning of ads? Let's say there are two ads shown to users. They are at the beginning or at the end. Is there a pattern with those as well? Uh, when a user is shown at the end of the video, uh, the uh, retention rate is higher. Uh, is, is there some sort of pattern noticed there? Um, we don't have any data on that. Like uh, we, can, we can look into it, um, but we don't have any data. And I think the kind of the trick, the, um, the key note here is to kind of uh, remember that we only have like a couple of minutes left uh, to the end of the mm. session to the end of the interview, right? <clears throat> not, not the group practice, to the end right. of the interview. So this is kind of where you have to say, this is what I've identified, and here are the things that I'm gonna do next if I was the PM, right? Um, and it's, you know, sometimes it kind of feels a little bit uncomfortable to go through this transition uh, because you're going from this like kind of investigative mode into, okay, here's what I'm gonna do, or like take action uh, as a PM if I was in charge of this product, right? Um, so kind of keep that in mind. Um, okay, uh, we'll go to Lel. Yeah, so at this point, I would just summarize the problem identified, which is um, because since February, what we wanted to simulate re ads revenue. And so we've been showing more ads and that has caused user to uh, deflect uh, within one video or say um, the completion rate or close rate has been decreased because of the ad showing. And so as a PM, what I would do is um, I would look at, well, as a PM, we will always try to uh, balance between like trade off. Um, so um, a lot of metrics that we're looking at like revenue uh, users or time spent on the app. And so I would probably conduct a cost analysis benefit, uh, like cost benefit analysis, um, like either for short term, long term, um, and to prioritize which metrics that we're looking at at which stage more, uh, which is more important than the other. And um, uh, obviously, revenue is important, but um, from YouTube's YouTube standpoint. Um, we should be um, increasing engagement and retention, um, focusing on that at this point, and therefore, um, like compromising revenue um, a little bit or how to balance that. Um, 
like in from a long term perspective. Um, yeah, we should probably um, decrease the amount of ads as of now, and then um, probably encourage people to sign up for the premium um, so that we can generate revenue from there. Um, yeah, it's it's a it's a trade off like kind of problem. So I would mention that like long term cost benefit analysis. Yeah, yeah. Thank you so much for sharing that. And like you know, in trade off situation, it's kind of hard to give a quick answer. But like one way um, that I would deal with trade offs is say, look, um, in a trade off situation, like you know, the different kind of attributes that come to mind. Um, you know, competition comes to mind. Um, of course, you know, the financial health of the company comes to mind, uh, user retention comes to mind. Um, and then you can kind of share your philosophy on what should be the highest priority for the organization and why. And then kind of from there say, um, this would be something that I would take into consideration, right? So for example, here's one way you could position, right? You could say, um, you know, revenue is very important, um, I, would, I would think that given uh, video is like a very, very critical, um, you know, content uh, method for people to connect with a lot of competition, um, I think we have to be very careful about uh, how we present the ads and we should do it not at the cost of engagement. Um, so I would try to figure out, um, you know, is there a balance uh, where we can increase revenue uh, without having a major impact? On the impact in, uh, on engagement, and I don't know what that number is. Uh, we have to, of course, discuss internally. But uh, I would ideally want to only do this um, at a point where um, the impact is not significant on the engagement side. We can also turn it the other way, right? This is all comes down to kind of PM philosophy, right? You can say, yes, the, the um, ads have gone up a lot, um, but at the same time, I can see that the number of uh, monthly active users has not really gone down, right? Um, so what I mean by that is that we haven't really churned any users um, and maybe it's okay because we're kind of generating more revenue um, and we're still got the core user base, right? That's an, another philosophy, another kind of um, way of thinking. Um, what I'm trying to kind of highlight here is that there are like kind of different ways um, of some, you know, describing what the next steps are. It's going to depend on, uh, you know, how you justify, um, you know, what the actions should be as a PM. Um, I'll go to Mark and then I'll eventually I'll see if S. Chan is anything you want to add. Go ahead, Mark, is there anything you want to add? Okay, I'll go to S. Chan and then if Mark, anything he wants to add. Yeah, I mean, um, you took the words out of my mouth. I was going to highlight that point that monthly active users um, ha hasn't suffered. So, there's still loyalty to um, the, the the platform and the product, even though um, competitors have taken away from our market share. So it seems sort of paradoxical in a way because um, because our month our, our number of users our sort of top line metrics hasn't changed, but competitors have taken our market share. So I'm wondering whether the market got bigger for video. And then I'm also wondering, um, it, you know, if monthly active users hasn't formed, does that mean that we actually have more paying subscribers? Um, in, in which case, you know, the average watch time shouldn't really, it shouldn't really, well, I mean, I guess we, we have to really look into that and, and see as to what's the percentage of our, our base. Um, so, so that those would be my comments. Thank you so much for that. And, and you're totally right. Like, I mean, it might be that uh, as we dig further into it, we see that, um, you know, the revenue generated from premium members also went up um, and, uh, you know, it's, it was basically worth it at the end, right? Because we monetize it better. Um, and there's so many things, you know, we can think about, like you're right. Another aspect is like market share, right? Um, maybe our growth kind of plateaued if the number of monthly active users stayed the same. Um, all these different things that we can come of highlight really briefly. Um, but I think what's important is like to kind of keep in mind that um, every PM is unique in their own way, right? 
Um, everybody is like really a kind of a business mind and everybody's are, you know, have their own unique business philosophy. So um, it's okay to, you know, kind of share your philosophy on like, you know, a product business and what it should be, right? And uh, they're not looking for the right answer. They're looking for an answer um, that is, you know, well thought out, shows you have, you know, critical thinking and you can kind of explain um, your thought process. I hope you guys enjoyed today's session. Thank you so much uh, for coming and uh, I will see you all next week. By the way, I lost a bunch of chats. I got so into the conversation that I didn't read any of the chats. Um, so uh, I'll catch up with them afterwards and uh, if there's anything needed, I'll share them with you later. Thank you and have a good night. Bye.